All right, well, second day, day two, kind of the beginning. I mean, I've been driving for a couple hours already. Headed towards I-15. I-15 is going to be the only road until I get to my destination. Still in southern Utah, having a good time, actually just enjoying the drive. I don't usually, don't usually enjoy the drives too much, but this time it's just peaceful. I, there's no pressure to get somewhere too fast, so just enjoy the drive. Sometimes that's what you gotta do on a road trip. If you're with a lot of people, you're gonna feel a little pressure to get to some location and uh, there's nothing wrong with that it's just uh, I prefer a little peace and that's what I'm getting on this drive so getting what I want when I want it Topography interesting. You realize what you go through and how quickly it changes. Now, I know there are places in the U.S. that, yeah, it doesn't change that much. You can go for hundreds of miles 
it'll just be flat fields you know it doesn't change it's not interesting but in the west I know that there is a type you know of geography that is common but the topography is constantly changing uh, from one day to the next yesterday we were in the high desert this is the high desert also but it but the mountains are different the rolling hills are different here in southern Utah than they were you know near Flagstaff it there's all of a sudden a big change in the color of the scenery that you're going through the, the plant life you know it just changes so drastically um, you know, within just a couple of hours of driving, and uh, Joe Burrow, that's what keeps you interested. Here we go, about to connect with I-15, as you can see up ahead. And uh, yeah, as I was saying before, the topography is cool, but now get to the freeway. In half a mile, turn right onto the I-15 north ramp to Beaver. I'm gonna go to Beaver. I'm gonna go north, past Beaver, I promise. Anyway, a lot of times where the freeways are, yeah, the geography and the topography are not as interesting, but we'll see. That's why I got this, we'll see what we get. Here we go, back on the freeway after, you know, probably, oh, jeez. Okay, I gotta speed up. This truck is pushing me. Yeah, he don't like it, but... Continue dude, on I-15 North for 285 miles. I did not have to hit that fast. That guy's going too fast. I don't know what the speed limit is. It says 80, so I guess I'm going 85. All right. That was fun.
Anyway, that's all I'm saying. It's not quite as interesting. See how good it is. Been a while. Well, good morning. It's time to set off. Last leg of the trip to get to my parents' house. Gotta drop the key off at the front desk. And then off to Montana. I'm in Idaho Falls. It's been a decent trip, quiet making it just fine it's smoky here lots of uh lots of smoke from wildfires and i guess canada is the worst so all right let's start our day you ready all right go <laughs> then you better get going <laughs> I just think we have a lady here now. <laughs> 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 Kyle's actually learned some skills. <laughs> Whoa, that was the one that worked. All right, off with her head. <laughs> I blocked that one kind of. That was the best one I've done. <laughs> <laughs> Montana going too fast though. Well, I guess I'm just doing speed limit at 70 because we're going through curves. If you look here, they have these 55 mile an hour corners. This is not your, oh, it's a suggestion. I mean, I could probably do 65, yes, but if I were doing 70 around them, I'd feel it. They're pretty strong corners. And <clears throat> by the way, the whole area is beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Creek running right beside the, the freeway over here to the right. Can't see it right now because it's opposite of the curve, but um, a lot of bugs actually. But anyways, it's it's a gorgeous place to drive through. It's the, the drive between Helena and Butte. And you know, I'm sure the people who live here, which I was one of them for a few years, but they, they probably get bored with this, but since I only drive it every four years or five years or so, I always, I, I love it. It's curvy, it's kind of fun to take the car or motorcycle through. You do need to be careful because this, as you can see, they, they are advertising the curves. And when I say advertising, it's a serious thing. You cannot fly through these curves as fast as you think you can because you're on a... Uh, uh, a freeway, you know, freeways a lot, but, oh, I can go as fast as I want, no, these you absolutely have to slow down to go through the curves because they don't bank as well as you'd like, and, um, and they are just that tight, so, anyway, I'm starting to head home, it's the reverse trip, I'm excited about it, Ready to go home. Got to visit with my parents. It was a lot of fun. Didn't do much video. Just visited. Enjoyed their company because I don't get to see them. But every couple years, and they're getting up there in their age. And, you know, you don't know how much time people have. And don't live life with regrets. Go visit your family when you have the chance. I know it's not all the time. And you might live far away from them. But if you can, go see them. All right. Just, you know, driving through the mountains. Something just awesome about it. Love the deep greens on the pine trees. And just 
just the sound of the road going by. Yeah. Life's pretty good when you're doing this. Just gotta be careful. It's early enough in the day that you might see some wildlife on the road. Although it's not super early. It's like 8, 8.20 a.m. <clears throat> early, early, leave early. Leave early, leave early and finish early. Don't stretch it out too far. Give yourself time to relax in the evening so you're ready, especially with this kind of trip, which is a three-day drive, the way I'm doing it, three-day drive. You gotta, you gotta pace yourself. Tomorrow, tomorrow's gonna be a longer drive, about eight and a half hours. And uh, it's not typically my thing, but I kind of want to get back early on Sunday because my wife has to be back at work Monday morning. to happen. Things like that were known to happen. But uh, Butte's also, it's kind of its own unique place. It's a unique personality. It's kind of like, you know, if you were in Illinois and you lived in Springfield, you were living kind of a rural existence. You went to Chicago and there was definite attitude to the an attitude shift between Chicago and in Springfield. Well, the same is true of Butte and almost anywhere else in the whole state, that there's a big attitude shift uh, between the people who live in Butte and the people who live in different parts. Uh, it, so, Butte, uh, my dad uh, substitute taught here and uh, he went to the wrong school one day. He went to the right. He was supposed to be there, but it ended up being the wrong school because he had a few of the guys try to they acted like at least tried to throw him out a window in a high school he had uh, or some other special school I don't know what it was but they, uh, the story is they picked him up and were acting like they were going to throw him out a window this is back in the 70's <laughs> so 50 years ago Butte was it's own special brand of uh, watch out <laughs> you know be careful and uh, it may still be that way today. 
that's not the typical attitude of most Montanans, but you might find that here in Butte, Montana. So, try to make sure that you can see that ahead of me. So what I'm seeing is a lot of smoke. And that's been an issue since I've been here. The nice thing on the day I arrived, which is Tuesday, today's Friday, uh, on Tuesday it rained. It was raining pretty good. And that rain cleared out a lot of the smoke. I've got to guess that there's a fire nearby. This is really pretty thick. Okay. My, my point is, hard to see the mountains right now through all this smoke. And it's kind of preventing me from taking, like, taking up my drone and flying because has been conducive to good lighting and uh, I want to be careful. I want to take very quality, high quality drone footage when I do it. So I, I'm kind of choosy when I, I do that. So if, if it's hazy and it's blocking out, you know, the beautiful blue sky or the puffy white clouds that make things gorgeous, I, uh, I, I'll, I'll just choose not to do it, which may have to happen to you, because there's a place I'd like to take a video of, but if the smoke is overhanging the whole um, area, it just might not be a good, you know, I want it to be quality. It may not be quality, so, that's all I'm saying.